Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our worship service here at First Presbyterian in Copper's Cove. I am doing the worship service from a slightly different position today, and I thank you for all of your prayers as I have had some knee surgery and am recovering, but I am doing great, and I um, hope that you will indulge me enough to do the service from this position this week. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to resume from behind the pulpit. But we are so glad to have you here today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. I welcome those that are here in person and those that are worshiping with us online. We are glad to have you all here doing what we do best together, and that is to worship the Lord our God. Today we have a really special service for you. Uh, not only are we continuing in our mission month and remembering all that we are doing to help those that are less fortunate, we have, I believe, made uh, over a hundred hygiene kits. Yay! <laughs> and that is for the gifts of the heart. These hygiene kits are used for those who um, experience uh, disaster and are out of their homes um, and are um, needing just to have toiletries to keep them going and we have made enough to help a hundred plus people so we are so grateful for all of your donations and your generous contributions and then all of those that came this morning and helped to fill those bags that will be mailed this week and one person that I would like to really thank. She has gone home not feeling very well today. We need to include her in our prayers, but she is the, the brains on all of this and always the driving force, and that is the elder over mission and outreach, and that is Marian Harrison. So I, would, I think she'll probably be watching, so I would love it if we could give her a clap offering. <laughs> Yay for Marian. Um, I also um, want to um, uh, remind you that Mission Month is not yet over. Um, we have two more weeks of Mission Month. Um, next week is a very important week in that we will be hosting uh, Reverend uh, um, Lemuel Garcia. We have hosted Lemuel um, before. He is a delight. He is uh, coming from the Presbyterian Mission Agency in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, he is giving of his time. He's going to come during the Sunday school hour, which is when we've been doing all of our mission month activities at 945. And he will be teaching us all about the mission activities of the Presbyterian Church as a whole. He is over the Synod of the Sun area, the southern region of the Synod of the Sun. So he's sort of over our area, but he's going to talk about the entire uh, mission activities of the PCUSA. And then he is going to preach. He's going to lead our worship service. So I would strongly encourage you to come and learn from Lemuel Garcia. Let's be good hosts and hostesses and give a good turnout for Lemuel Garcia. I think some of you might remember he came during World Communion Sunday two years ago. Um, and he is um, very, very enamored with our congregation and, and offered to come again as soon as we could get him here. So um, he was scheduled for Mission Month this year, so I hope that you're able to come next week, 945. So set your alarms and get here early to, to hear Lemuel Garcia. There is yet one more week, and, um, and that is... The, the next Sunday, but actually we're going to do it on Saturday, which is sort of a little different. We're going to have a mission month activity, not on Sunday. We're going to do it on the Saturday before, and that is because we're going to do some painting. We're going to do a mission activity for our own church. Um, the church hasn't, honestly, and I think I'm correct in this, hasn't had this part, the new edition, been painted since it was built, which would have been 1995. 
So it's due for some paint. And um, there is a decor committee, if you would like to be on that. I think they're still um, talking about um, what color, but they're, they're coming down to a decision that maybe it'll be a light gray, which will pick up the carpet and be very pretty in our narthex. But we could use um, lots of help on that. So Saturday, the 24th of August, um, I believe we're going to start at 930. We'd like as many of you to come as possible. And let's see if we can't paint whatever gets assigned to us. But I think it's the narthex and maybe the hallways. And if we get a lot of people, we might extend into the bathrooms and office and, and give this church a good uh, renewal. Okay? So uh, two more mission activities. And that will complete our mission month. But we can do so many good things when we work together. So um, put those on your calendar and let's finish out our mission month with great gusto. Um, the blessing of the backpacks is today. So during the children's time, uh, all of those children and youth uh, even teachers, anyone who's headed back to school, come on forward and have a, have a seat here, either up here in the front pews or around on the floor, and we will bless those backpacks, which represent your dreams and your new year um, as you head back to school. Um, teachers. We are starting the new Sunday school year, and we're still in need of some teachers. So if you have a calling, if you feel God tapping you on the shoulder and saying, I need you to teach, um, spread my word, teach minds about me and my word, answer that call. Come and talk to me or come and talk to our discipleship elder, Vicki Morris, because we need a number of spots filled to start off our Sunday school year. We pride ourselves in being able to have classes for every age group, and we need a few more teachers. So um, please check your hearts. Go prayerfully before the Lord and see if you are feeling that call to teach um, the Sunday school hour from 9.30 to 10.45 every week or to be a co-teacher to be an assistant. We need always two. So um, those are probably the big announcements. Um, <coughs> next week we also have, um, following the worship service, our third Sunday luncheon. So Lemuel will be here and we'll have a big celebration afterwards with, with the kind of meals that we tend to have. So that'll be great. So remember to bring um, a dish if you have one that you can share and then we will eat and have fellowship and great time together. Are there other announcements for the congregation this week? Are there any from you back there? Okay. <laughs> it's a little different doing the service from here. I'm a little disoriented. <laughs> All right. Um, I will not do our moment for mission because I think I already did it. Um, so um, let us then center our hearts and our minds and prepare to worship the Lord our God with our prelude, How Can I Keep From Singing?
please join me in the call to worship. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. In faith, let us turn to our God whose love is sure. Please stand if you are able to sing together hymn number 353, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On cross the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, for blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Because of such great mercy, God is to forgive all the ways we fail to live in faithfulness. Relying on that mercy, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Merciful God, trusting you does not always come easy when each day we are faced with temptations. We find ourselves doubting that love conquers fear. We are not convinced that power comes through weakness. We cannot conceive how you could heal us. Forgive our lack of faith, O oh God, and renew our trust in you. For we would be disciples of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. If the Lord kept count of all our sins, 
Who could stand? But with God there is forgiveness. Christ gives us peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Having been forgiven, let us share our peace with one another. Please share a sign of greeting and forgiveness with one another using our heart hands. Say, the peace of Christ be with you. everybody come on and sit around me on the floor here come on over on this side too let's all get close let's get close up here today all right what happened to my leg um, the doctors the doctors are making it better I had a knee that was hurt and they're they they're making it all better and I will soon be feeling real good better than new all right so, yeah, that's why I am. Um, Miss Comfort, would you mind getting me that um, microphone? I am going to let you all, those of you that would like to, um, let me put this microphone on. This week, do most of you start back in school? Do you start in school this week? You guys are pretty cramped. Why don't you scoot over just a little bit because we're going to be standing up and moving around. You want to scoot over and give yourself a little bit of room? Jameson, can you scoot over like right here? Uh, Janae, why don't you scoot over a little bit so you all can move around? Can you scoot over a little bit? Everybody's got room to stand up. Success and Janae, could you guys both scoot over a little bit? There you go. All right, do we have a little room? Okay, and those cards, why don't we, before we get started, why don't we split those and we'll give some to Miss Josephine and some to me. Okay, all right, yeah. Miss Josephine, can you take some of those? All right, no, just wait, but wait. All right, folks, um, so school this week. Is everybody heading to school this week or is it next week? How many of you are heading to school this week? Gonna start school. The hands went up a little slow, but I think you're all going to start school this week. All right. Um, what, what grades? Would you guys like to tell me into the microphone and tell the whole group? What, what grade are you headed into? What grade are you headed into? You want to use the microphone and say what grade you're headed into? Seventh grade. Seventh grade. So are you starting a new school or are you in the same school? Same school. Same school. What grade are you headed into, success? Second grade. Second grade. How about you, 
Second grade. Ariel's headed into second grade, too. How about you, Miss Caitlin? What grade are you headed into? Can you talk into the microphone and say? Are you going into fourth grade? Is that right? How did you know? I just <laughs> knew it. I just knew it. What grade are you headed into, Janae? Kindergarten. You're going into kindergarten. How about you, Jameson? Fourth grade. Fourth grade. How about Ithiel? What grade are you headed into? Second. Second. We have a lot of second graders. Let's see, Leo, are you headed into school? I think so. Are you going into kindergarten? Is that right? Kindergarten, yes. Okay. First grade. Okay. All right. See, I missed. I missed one. I'm behind. Oh, Neil, what grade? Kindergarten. Got a couple kindergartners. How about you, Leo? I mean, Asher, great. Kindergarten, too. Okay. Oh, they're in the same class. Daryl. Ninth. I'm going ninth. You're going into ninth high school, so you're headed into a new school. Yes, ma'am. How about Ephraim? Where are you going? Say second grade? Is it second grade? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Shy. Shy. Okay. All right. I think we got everybody. Did we get everybody? Pardon me? Where's Leah? Oh, right here in front of me. Leah, are you headed? You're pre K yet, right? Pre K? Pre K. Okay. She's in pre K. All right. And Jory, you're back there. You're headed into 10th. Am I right? Okay, 10th. Growing up on us. Growing up on us. Okay, guys. Well, you know what? It's exciting. It's exciting to go to school, and all of you are starting, even, even if you're not starting a new school, you're still starting something new, you know? And while that's exciting, sometimes it can be a little scary because it's, it's new, right? You're going to have some new friends. You probably have new teachers. Um, you might have a new kind of place to walk around in, new classrooms, new ways to have to find your way around. And, and it just, you know, might be a little scary sometimes. And there might be new responsibilities expected of you. New friends. Yes, success. You will have some of the same friends, yes, a little bit, but sometimes you have some new ones. And it's just, you know, there's wonderful, exciting things and great things, but I know that sometimes it can be a little, little, little make you a little nervous too. And so today we're going to pray for that because we want you to remember that even though there are some scary things, and throughout the year, there's going to be things that make you a little nervous, tests and things like that. You don't have to be worried. And do you know why that is? Why do you think? Why do you think? You think it because you're not alone? Who do you think is with you? Yeah, Ithiel. God is with you. Jesus, yeah, Jesus is walking right there with you. You can feel Jesus right there in your heart, right? Jesus is with you, and you, you don't need to be afraid of some of the new and more, more worrisome things because Jesus is right there with you, right? Giving you strength and encouragement and comfort, okay? So uh, one of the things we do every year, and we started doing this a couple years ago, and it's sort of become one of our traditions, is we sing and we sing about how Jesus is with us, just like our backpacks are with us, right? Our backpacks are the things that carry our supplies. They're the things that carry the work that we do. But they also sort of represent us, right? They represent you and all your dreams and the things that you do. So we're going to pray over your backpacks, and we're going to remember that Jesus is with you, and there's nothing to be afraid of. So there is a song. Let's see if we can go forward, Mr. Curtis. Can you get to after the children's time? So keep going forward.
keep going, keep going. Almost there, we're almost there. One more, there we go. It's called Rise and Shine and Give God the Glory, Glory. Okay? Now, when we do this, we don't sit down. We stand up. All right? And we do hand motions that I'm going to show you what they are. Let me put this down for a second. So when we do rise and shine, you have to rise. So you go rise with your arms and shine like the sun. All right? And then you do what's, I know everyone, the universal sign for giving God glory is going glory, glory. Give God the glory, glory. All right? So let's try it again. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. One more time. Rise and shine and then you have to clap. Give God the glory, glory. And then you put your hands down low like you're patting people on the head. Children of the Lord. Do you all think you can do that? And then there's some verses, and then we go back into singing that. So how about everybody stand? You all can stand, too. You know this. We do this every year. I want Miss Becky up here where she can see. Miss Comfort, you can help, too. Everybody can watch these two, and let's, let's do the rise and shine. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Sing. Here we go. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, children of the Lord. We're back to school to learn and be growing, growing back to school to learn and be growing. shine and give God the glory, glory, <clears throat> give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. When we're and writing and doing our mathy, mathy reading and writing and doing our mathy, mathy, Jesus is there. Just like our backy packies, children of the Lord. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, children of the Lord. Yay! All right, you can be seated. All right. So you remember now, don't have any worries, okay? Because who is with you? Just like your baggy packies. Jesus is with you. So let's have a prayer, okay? Can you all bow your heads and let's have a prayer? Holy One, <clears throat> God of all knowing, God of all learning, we are grateful for the privilege of education. <clears throat> Bless these children and bless these backpacks, these students that carry them, for they stand ready to commit themselves to study and to learn. Bless also the teachers and the administrators, the custodians, the nurses, the aides, and all others who have been called to serve in our schools. May they all be reminded that you go with them to their schools or their home school settings. Uplift and support them each day, and may they all be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them. We pray also for the parents who are supporting their children in their growth. Let them know that the children are given to them by you as a gift to nurture, that you will not leave them alone in their responsibilities, and that you care and love them as well. We pray in the name of Jesus who we seek to follow each day by day. Amen. All right, we have a couple things to put in your backpacks already. So we're going to give you some cards 
that were made by BJ that you can read and encourage you. So go ahead and let's pass out our cards, Miss Josephine. And uh, there you go. Jory, here's one for you. All right. Here's Leah. You like that song, huh? Ephraim. This is for Jory. What? He's already got it. These are all ones that people are not here. Okay. All right. All right. Children, I, um, we've already said our prayers, so I'm going to thank you for being good listeners today. And you may go with Miss Josephine if you are seven or under. If not, you may go back to your seats and sit with your parents, all right? Thank you for listening this morning. Congregation, our next song is Be Still My Soul. Hymn number 819. Let us pray. By the power of your spirit, speak your word to us, O God. Show us who you are and who you are calling us to be. For the sake of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Listen for the word from the Psalms. First reading is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change. Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all for helping the children do what we do every year. That is so much fun. And we do pray that they have a wonderful year ahead of them. Let us attend to the second reading, which comes from the epistle of 1 Corinthians. We'll be reading from the 10th chapter, verses 6 through 13. Listen now for God's word to you. Now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wondrous Savior, uphold me now as we uplift you. In Christ's name, amen. Well, it's tough right now. I know. Everything is going wrong, and the hurt just keeps on coming. The weight is so heavy, but don't worry. The sun will come up tomorrow. God doesn't give you more than you can handle. You've heard comments like this, haven't you? They're said by well-intentioned people who want to console and encourage someone else so that they will not give up. But like the last two phrases that we've considered, God helps those who help themselves and everything happens for a reason, the phrase, God doesn't give you more than you can handle, is not, friends, biblical. Now granted, in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he says, 
God is faithful and will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you may endure it. It sounds a little like God doesn't give you more than you can handle. However, when we take what Paul was saying here apart, and when we consider it in its context, which we always should do, we see otherwise. The Greek word which Paul uses here is periasmos. It is often translated as testing, but Adam Hamilton and many other Bible scholars use the word tempting instead of testing because the context shows that thus far in the conversation between Paul and the Corinthians, what we've seen them talking about is being tempted to commit sexual immorality or idolatry. Paul and the Corinthians have not been talking about them being subject, subjected to all of life's trials and tribulations. And this is because the Corinthians of that time were surrounded by pagan influences. They were very, very vulnerable to temptation. Corinth was a large provincial capital of Greece. It was on an isthmus and was a very busy port city with harbors on both sides. People from all types of cultures would go there to do their business. It was a wild and rowdy place. Everything that happened in Corinth needed to stay in Corinth. <laughs> to boot, the Christians of Corinth were pagan converts, still very, very familiar with the worship of the Greek gods and goddesses and with temple prostitution. Ultimately, Paul was trying to encourage them in their spiritual discipline. He was also reminding them that their experience wasn't unique. The ancient Israelites he was talking about had tried to hold on to their faith despite the pagan influences around them. He was comforting the Corinthians by saying that God would always be there to help them to resist. They'd not be tempted beyond their abilities because, because, and this is hugely important, God was there to give them a way out if they would but choose it. They'd not be tempted because God was there to give them a way out if they would but choose it. Now we all know how strong temptations can be, don't we? It seems like I am always on a diet. I don't know if any of you remember Garfield, the cartoon. He said that diet is just die with a T. I, I agree. But, you know, oh, how hard it is to resist when those wonderfully fried appetizers and those very delicious sweet desserts come with the meal. It's very hard. Temptations big and little can be strong, and we are so feeble. But it helps to first know that testings and temptations are not given us by God. James says, let no one say that I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and God himself tempts no one. When we pray each week for God to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, we are in essence saying, deliver us from the evil temptations that threaten us to take, that threaten to take us in. Lead us, God in a different way. It helps to know that God doesn't tempt us. That's not God's nature. It also helps to know that God is there to show us the way when we are weak. Have we not all heard the Spirit whispering in our heads, 
speaking to us through our circumstances or through other people? Haven't we all heard the Spirit's voice just before we take or we don't take the bait? The devil may tempt, but the devil doesn't really make us do anything. God, the Holy Spirit, is always there to show us the way. And God gives us the freedom to choose it. And then, of course, God is there to pick us up when we fall. So this is what Paul in 1 Corinthians is saying when he says, God is faithful and will not let you be tempted beyond your strength. But with the tempting, God will also provide the way. It's all about God helping us to not choose wrongly. The phrase, God will not give you more than you can handle, does not, brothers and sisters, apply to the biblical message, period. And on its own, it is not appropriate in other ways, too. First, it is not appropriate when it is used to console or to encourage in a time of great pain. It infers that our God is one who gives us the pain and then we'll jump in, back in, when we can't handle it. And that is not God. It isn't. And that's a fact. As the Apostle John says, our God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And the psalmist says, great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. So how can we turn to our God in a time of great hardship if we're made to mistrust and think that God has brought it all upon us? In addition, God will not give you more than you can handle is not appropriate because, well, sometimes in this world we have more than we can handle. We do. And that's a fact, too. Just ask a civilian in Gaza or maybe a Rohingya refugee who fled her country six years ago after seeing her family be brutalized or killed, their village burned, and who has been living in Bangladesh ever since in a disease-ridden, overcrowded tent city where malnutrition and exploitation and violence, especially gender-based violence, is rampant. And don't forget about the horrific monsoon that is now upon her in her little tent. Just ask any of these people, ask any psychologist, any school counselor, any pastor, any police officer, any teacher, any attorney, any doctor, ask yourself. You know, even Paul says in 2 Corinthians, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. But this happened that we might rely on ourselves, not on ourselves, but on God. Sometimes we have more than we can handle. And finally, God will not give you more than you can handle is inappropriate because when said to believers who have reached a point of breaking, it may cause them to feel guilty for not being strong enough to handle things themselves. They may feel so much guilt, in fact, that they do not turn to God or to others for help. Reverend Dr. Thomas Long tells a story of a young pastor who made it her goal to visit the entire membership during her first six months of her new pastorate. She did, apart from one couple. Leave them alone, one of the elders advised. They're not coming back. But the young pastor had set a goal for herself, so one afternoon she drove to the family's home and she knocked on the door. Only the wife was home and she invited the pastor in for a cup of coffee. They sat at the kitchen table and they chatted about this and they chatted about that. And then Dr. Long explains they talked about it. 
It seems that two years earlier, the wife had been vacuuming and lost track of their toddler son, who she thought was playing in the room next to her. He later was found in their backyard pool. Our friends at church were very kind, she told the pastor. They told us that it was God's will that he died. They told us that we'd get through it because God doesn't give anyone more than they can handle. But we just can't handle. The young pastor put her coffee cup down on the table and said, your friends at church meant well, but they were wrong. It wasn't God's will, and sometimes we face situations that truly are more than we can handle. That's when we need to turn to others for help. Surprisingly, the mother's jaw clenched and her face reddened, and she said in anger, it had to have been God's will. God took him, and I can't. The pastor continued, God was as grief-stricken by your son's death as you are. But the woman's face remained frozen in rage. It was clear that the conversation was over. Returning to her office, the young minister kicked herself. I shouldn't have touched it. I should have left well enough alone. She thought these things. But on her answering machine, there was a message waiting there from the wife. I don't know where this is going, the trembling recorded voice says, but my husband and I want you to come out and talk to us. For two years, we have thought God was angry at us, but now we wonder if it's not been the other way around. Friends, we will face adversity in our lives. There's no doubt about it. We or someone we love may face terminal illness or die. We may struggle with debilitating disease, depression, suicidal thoughts, or grief so heavy that we can't breathe. We may experience war or financial problems or relationship problems, divorce, job loss, or bullying that leaves us no escape. And we may become overwhelmed but the promise is not that we will have a pain-free life, but a free one. And God is there to help us choose his way. We can stand on that promise. And we can also stand on the fact that God in Jesus has suffered rejection, betrayal, abandonment, torture, and death, and his resurrection all to proclaim that evil will not win in the end. We can indeed cast all our cares upon this one because he understands and he is living and there to help. So no matter how you slice it, the common phrase, God will not give you more than you can handle, is not appropriate. Reverend Hamilton suggests it might better be said, God will help you handle all that you've been given. That's the biblical truth. Yes, indeed. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, God will help us when the morning dawns. Amen. Friends, let us stand and sing the CARES Chorus.
worship God with our morning offering. <clears throat> Eternal God, we rejoice with thanksgiving for all that we have received. Multiply these gifts that we give so that the world may more deeply know the fullness of life in you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture says that people will come from north and south and east and west to feast at this table. This table is the table of our risen Lord, and Jesus invites everyone who believes and trusts in him to come and partake in the feast that he has prepared. So let us come today and meet here the risen Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise eternal God. For you have created all things and you have created them good. You have created us in your image and you have given us the breath of life. You have given us the freedom to choose your way. But when, O oh Lord, we have chosen our own way and have not chosen yours, you have not abandoned us, but indeed you have been faithful and kind to your people through long generations. It is out of this tremendous kindness that you promised yourself in covenant through Abraham and Sarah and you told us your purposes through the commandments with Moses. And you called for justice through the cry of the prophets. Indeed, O oh Lord, you have been faithful and kind to your people through long generations. It is out of this tremendous kindness that when the time was right, you sent your son to be one of us. He lived as one of us, yet was without sin. To the poor he proclaimed, the good news of the gospel, to the prisoner's freedom, and to the sorrowful joy. In his dying, in his rising from the grave, he opened the gates of eternal life forever. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup to proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and the blood of our Lord. Lord, we are so privileged to be able to go before your throne of grace and with our joys and concerns, offer them with the confidence that you will carry them. And today we offer thanks for those who are celebrating special days, birthdays and anniversaries. We offer special thanks for Karina and for Lodi. We thank you not only for their lives, but we ask you that they, they have every day of the upcoming year be one that they feel your spirit and know that they are blessed. We thank you for the privilege of being able to make the hygiene kits for those who may experience hard times of recovering following a disaster. We pray also for the youth group this year and feel blessed to have youth in our congregation who that we can help guide as they walk and deepen their journey and relationship with Christ. We pray also for those who are in our hearts who need your healing grace. We pray that you bring new life out of destruction and hope out of despair and freedom out of fear and growth out of difficulty, joy out of sadness. We lift to, those, lift to you those that are near and dear to us, those that are far away and need your healing touch. We lift them all to you now in the silence. We offer a special prayer for Grace and for Denise. Nourished at this table, Lord, make us one with Christ and with all those who share this feast. Let us look to the day when we will gather with all your saints at your table in glory. We pray this prayer in the name of your word made flesh in the holy and the life-giving spirit now and forevermore. Amen.
We pray now that the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy word be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our sins. And lead us not into deliverance, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the night that he was betrayed, our Savior took bread, and after having given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after having given thanks, our Savior took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For inasmuch as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God. For us, the people of God. So let's come and let's taste. And let's see that the Lord is good. Come.
Let us pray. Wondrous God, we thank you for sharing your very self with us in this holy meal. We ask you now to go with us and by the power of your Holy Spirit be with us as we share ourselves with others in this world. We say this prayer in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, let's stand and sing the hymn of the church, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ the King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening to every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. <coughs> standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God. So, friends, I encourage you to go out into the world in peace. Stand on those promises of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. the grace of God in Jesus Christ the Spirit moves us to magnify the Lord draw disciples and meet human need
I have one uh, uh, announcement other than to just thank Mark. That was lovely. We are also blessed every week with his wonderful music. Um, I want to announce one more time, Lemuel Garcia, you all remember him being here. I put your picture up. Some of you posed with him two years ago. Come next week. He will be here next week. Come at 945 so that we host him well and we will be in Fellowship Hall to hear what he has to teach us about the mission of the Presbyterian Church. It should be very interesting and we want to give him a good reception and then he will lead us in worship. So do not miss the next week. The following week on Saturday, we will paint the inside of the church in the narthex. So come on Saturday at 930. And on Sunday, we will have a confirmation of Ryan Oban. So we have a lot happening in the next couple weeks. So I wanted to remind you. And next week also, um, bring your dishes to share. All right? We love that rice. Oh, that's wonderful stuff. So, uh, so come on next week. Thank you for coming this morning. Have a wonderful week.